In this video, we will talk about first text classification model on top of features that we have described. And let's uh, continue with sentiment classification. We, we can actually take the IMDb Movie Reviews dataset that you can uh, download, it is freely available. It contains 25,000 positive and 25,000 negative reviews. And uh, how did that dataset appear? Uh, you can actually look at IMDb uh, website and you can see that people write reviews there and uh, they actually also provide the number of stars in from one star to ten star. They actually rate the movie and write the review. And if you take all those reviews from IMDb data uh, from IMDb website, you can actually use that as a as a data set for text classification because you have a text and you have a number of uh, stars and you can actually think of stars as sentiment. If we have at least seven stars, you can label it as positive sentiment. If it has at most four stars, that means that that is a bad uh, movie for, uh, for a particular person and that is a negative sentiment. And that's how uh, you get the data set for sentiment classification for free. It contains at most 30 reviews per movie, just to make it less biased for any particular movie. This dataset also provides a 50-50 train test split uh, so that future researchers can use the same split and reproduce the results and uh, enhance the model. For evaluation, you can use accuracy, and that actually happens because we have um, the same number of positive and negative reviews, so our data set is balanced in terms of the size of the classes, so we can uh, evaluate accuracy here. Uh, okay, so let's start with the first model. Let's take features. Uh, let's take bag of 1 grams with TF-IDF values. And in the result, we will have a matrix of features, uh, 25,000 rows and 75,000 columns. And that is a pretty huge feature matrix. And what is more, it is extremely sparse. If you look at how many zeros are there, then you will see that 99.8% of all values in that matrix are zeros. So that actually that actually applies uh, some restrictions on the models that we can use on top of these features. And the model that is usable for these features is logistic regression, which uh, works like the following. It tries to predict the probability of a review being a positive one, given the features that we uh, gave that model for that particular review. And the features that we use, let me remind you, is the vector of uh, TF-IDF values. And what you actually can do is you can uh, find a weight for every feature of that bag of words representation. You can multiply each value, each TF-IDF value by that weight, sum all, all of that uh, things and pass it through a sigmoid activation function. And that's how you get logistic regression model. And it's actually a linear classification model, and what's good about that is, since, it line, uh, since it's linear, it can handle sparse data. It's really fast to train, and what's more, the weights that we get after the training can be interpreted. And uh, let's look at that sigmoid graph at the uh, bottom of the slide. Uh, if you have a linear combination that is close to zero, that means that sigmoid will output 0.5. So the probability of review being positive is 0.5. So we really don't know whether it's positive or negative. But if that linear combination in the argument of our sigmoid function uh, starts to become more and more positive, so it goes further away uh, from zero, then you see that the probability of a, a review being uh, positive actually grows really fast. And that means that if we get the weights of our, uh, of our features that are positive, then those weights will likely correspond to the words that are positive. And if you take negative weights, they will correspond to the words that are negative, like uh, disgusting or uh, awful. Okay, so logistic regression can work on these features and we can interpret it. Let's train logistic regression over bag of 1 grams with TF-IDF values. What you can actually see is that accuracy 
accuracy on test set is 88.5%. And that is a huge uh, jump from a random classifier which outputs 50% accuracy. Let's look at learned features, because uh, linear models are, uh, can be interpreted. If we look at top positive weights, then we will see such words as great, excellent, perfect, best, wonderful. So it, it, it's really cool because the model captured that sentiment, the sentiment of those words, and it knows nothing about English language. It knows only the examples that we provided it with. And if we take uh, top negative weights, then you will see words like worst, awful, bad, waste, boring, and so forth. So these words are clearly uh, having a negative sentiment, and the model has learned it from the examples. That is pretty cool. Let's try to make this model a little bit better. We know how to do that. Let's introduce two grams to our model. And before we can uh, move further, we, can, we should throw away some n-grams that are not frequent, that are seen, let's say, less than five times because those n-grams are likely either typos or very, um, like, people don't say like that, and uh, some, of, some of them do, and it actually doesn't make sense to look at those features because we will most likely overfit, so we want to throw that away. And if you introduce two grams and that thresholding for uh, minimum frequency, you will actually get the number of uh, the, the dimensions of our feature matrix uh, the following, 25,000 by 150,000. So that is a pretty huge matrix, but we can still use linear models and it just works. Let's train logistic regression over this bag of 1 and 2 grams with TF-IDF values. And what we actually observe is that accuracy on test set has a bump it has a 1.5 accuracy uh, boost, and now we have very close to 90% accuracy. Let's look at learned weights. If you take at, uh, if you look at top positive uh, weights, then you will see that our two grams are actually used by our model, uh, because now it looks at two grams like well worth or better than, and it thinks that those two grams have positive sentiment. If you look, uh, on the contrary, on the uh, top negative weights, then you will see the worst. That is another 2 gram that is now used by our model to predict the final sentiment. You might think that, okay, what? it doesn't make any sense. So the worst or worst is just the same thing as well as well worth or just worth. So Maybe it is, but that 1.5% uh, improvement in accuracy actually uh, was provided by addition of those two grams into our model. So you can either believe it or not, but it actually increases performance. How to make it even better? You can play around with tokenization, because in reviews people use different stuff like emojis, they use uh, smiles uh, written with text, uh, they can usually use a bunch of exclamation marks, that, uh, that a lot of exclamation marks, and you can actually look at those sequences uh, as, you can look at them as different tokens, and you can actually introduce them to your model and maybe you will get a better sentiment classification. Because like a smiling face is better than a, an angry face, and you can use that. You, you should also try to normalize tokens um, by applying stemming or lemmatization. You can try different models like SVM or naive bias or any other model that can handle sparse features. You can throw, or another way is you can throw a bag of words away and use deep learning techniques to squeeze the maximum accuracy from that uh, data set. And as for the 2016, accuracy on this particular data set is close to 92%, and that is a 2.5% improvement over the best model that we can get with bag of words and uh, 2 grams. So, um, that, that might seem like not a very good improvement, but that is actually, um, that can actually make sense in some tasks where you can get a lot of money even for 1% improvement, like uh, ad click prediction or anything like that. So, let's summarize. Uh, bag of words 
and simple linear models over that features actually work. And you can add two grams and that is uh, like done uh, for free and you get a better model. The accuracy gain from deep learning models is not mind-blowing, but it is still there and you might consider using deep learning techniques to, uh, to solve the problems of sentiment classification. In the next video, we will look at spam filtering task, another example of text classification that can be handled in a, in a different way.